Okay, welcome to this message, very important message, a vital message for you to apply to your life personally, how to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Let's just pray, Father, as, as, as we sit in this message, it's not just going to be a message, it's going to be an application of truth in our lives. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over each one that's watching now. I pray for revelation and perception. That the, that the Holy Spirit, you will bear witness with the word that's being preached so that people who, who are hungry for this gift, Father, they will receive it without any hesitation. I thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you know, I encourage you to get the book by Bishop Bill Hammond. I think it's 77 Reasons Why You Must Speak in Tongues. And it's a very powerful book. But I'm going to teach from... Uh, a lesson that I teach on, on the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Uh, and and, I, and I'm going to do some practical stuff to help you actually speak in tongues. That's really what it is. So we're going to just go through some principles first. So first of all, the baptism in the Holy Spirit gives us power to live a victorious life. D.L. Moody said it's easier for a man to breathe in the air than it is for a Christian to live without the Holy Spirit. Nothing happens between God and man that doesn't happen through the Holy Spirit. So what's the ministry, first of all, of the Holy Spirit? Well, the Holy Spirit draws people to Jesus. John 16, verses 8 to, 40, uh, 8 to 11, and verse 14. I'm going to give you a lot of scripture references for the sake. I encourage you to take notes as well and send this to someone who maybe is even skeptical of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You see how many scriptures this talks about. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit dwells within every believer. That's 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19 and Romans 8 verse 9. The Holy Spirit seals the believer. A seal is an insignia of ownership. Therefore, the believer actually belongs to the Holy Spirit and vice versa. That's in Ephesians 1 verse 13 and 14 and Ephesians 4 verse 30. The Spirit empowers the believer, gives you extra power. It multiplies power in your life once the gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That's Galatians 5 verse 22 and 23, Romans 8 verse 2 and Acts chapter 1 verse 8, which says you'll receive power. Well, we'll uh, we should deal with that earlier on. Later on, sorry. The New Testament examples of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Uh, first of all, point A, the birth of the first century church on the day of Pentecost. This is found in Acts 2 verse 4. It says, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Can you see the words here in particular? Filled with the Holy Spirit. The evidence of that is to speak with other tongues. In point in B, uh, or number two, uh, I'm just giving you a scripture. In Acts 8 verse 17, And they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Acts 9 verse 17, uh, Paul, uh, when he initially got saved and baptized in the Holy Spirit, yeah, Ananias lays hands on him, and says that you may recover your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 18. Paul said, I thank my God I speak in tongues more than you all. This is a mighty man of God. You wonder why he said that uh, to that degree. Remember, tongues is our power plug to the supernatural in Christ. It's the doorway, in fact, to the supernatural. And then by the Gentiles. So we saw in Samaria, then by Paul. And then the Gentiles in Acts 10 verse 46, after Peter was just preaching, the Bible says the Holy Spirit fell upon them and they heard them speak with other tongues and magnify God. And then the uh, Ephesians, these are guys that uh, uh, Paul comes to them. He says, uh, have you heard of the Holy Spirit? They said, we never heard. Then he said, what baptism were you baptized under? They said, John's, they got baptized in the name of Jesus. These are brand new converts in a sense to Christianity. And it says, and when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke in tongues and even prophesied. I mean, that's, that's mind-blowing stuff. 
So note, there are two things that happened to the early Christians. Hands were laid on them, number one. And number two, they spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave them the sentences. That's what the word utterances means. So this experience is what the early church received. Uh, the first account of speaking in tongues is recorded in Acts 2 verse 24, which is about AD 33. And the last recorded in the book of Acts is Acts 19 verse 6, which is AD 59, 25 years later, they were still talking in tongues. So the word of God is our number one source for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let me just interject now. Don't go according to traditions of men. Don't go by hearsay. Don't go what, what old books have been written that it's passed away. Miracles have passed away. You might be from a mainland church. Hey, we are commanded. We are commanded to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I might get to it early on. If I don't, it's found in, a, 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 oh gosh, Lord, the scripture, Ephesians 5 verse 18. But be filled with the Spirit. And in the original it says, but be continually filled with the Holy Spirit. It seems evident that tongues was even attractive to Simon Magus, the, the, the sorcerer, for he desired to buy the gift. He must have seen the evidence and what it did for people. That's in Acts 8 verses 14 to 17. As I said earlier on in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 18, it's said, Paul made a statement. I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than you all. We'll see why. We'll see the purpose of speaking in tongues later on. And then in 1 Corinthians uh, 14 verse 1, although many do say, and the Bible says love is the greatest and only gift, the Bible says in that scripture, follow love and desire the spiritual gifts. Tongues and the gift of the Spirit were not only for the first century church. This is a very important scripture I'm going to give you now to show you that it's modern day. It hasn't changed. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He wouldn't give a gift to people there and stop it halfway. So Acts 2 verse 39, Jesus, uh, sorry, Peter speaking, he says, For the promise of the Holy Spirit, um, that's in brackets, is for you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord God shall call. That's you and I today. 2,000 plus years later, after this was penned, we are the ones that are afar off. Now you must ask a question, why tongues? Well, tongues is a despised gift by many. Uh, people often have risked the ecclesiastical till futures by exercising the gift. These are mainland church people and ministers have actually been kicked out of their denominations by speaking in tongues and receiving the gift, which is interesting. If, if it's been taught that it doesn't exist, why were they kicked out? Because they received something tangible. <laughs> That's what it shows, is evidence. So it doesn't matter what people say about us, but God's approval, the word is, is what counts. In Acts 2 verse 17, God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, but we'll all receive. The gift of tongues is a great reinforcement to the ministry of intercession. I'll get to that in more detail later. But in Romans 8 26, it says, we do not know how to pray, but the Holy Spirit takes hold together with us to help us pray. So another question is, what good can possibly be received from speaking in tongues. By the way, I'm sharing these notes that were written by Dr. Fred Roberts of the Durban Christian Center. And I've just put a few extras in myself. The Holy Spirit builds up and strengthens your spirit man, your inner man, your core being, you. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 4. He that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. The word edify comes from the word edifice. So when you speak in tongues, you are supernaturally building up yourself uh, with words. Remember, God created with words. And so when you speak in tongues, I'm going to show you, we're coming to a scripture just now that, that blew my mind when God showed me uh, what it is. I'm, I'm, I'm biting a bit not to jump the gun here. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2, he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men but to God. So it's got nothing to do with man. It's none of their business. According to the scripture, you speak to God. Huh? So do you want to hold back from speaking to God? Do you want to hold back from a supernatural gift that gives you a hotline to heaven? 
And then there's a reason what happens when you speak in tongues. There's, there's something that happens that, that is supernatural, being close to getting to there. So tongues gives you authority to witness and minister to others. He has the scripture. Jesus is speaking. These are Jesus speaking. So it shows you tongues is a first priority. Just before Jesus ascends to heaven, he says these words, but you shall receive power. Now we all know that, but for those of you who might not know, the word power there in the Greek where this was originally written is the word dunamis, or dunama, where we get the word dynamite from. Come on, dynamite power, explosive power, rock-breaking power, bondage-breaking power. You shall receive power after, not before, that the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And then you shall be witnesses unto me, not witnesses by mouth, witnesses in demonstration of power. Because tongues always produces miracle-working power. You see, all the great preachers that, that moved in miracles, wonders, and signs were tongue talkers, if I can say that. They received this, this divine gift of the baptism in the Holy Spirit, which empowered them to move in the supernatural. It says, you'll be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, your own in the hometown first, in Judea, like, like your province or, or, your, or your, your province, I'm speaking from South Africa region, and in Samaria which is like the, uh, the people you don't normally mix with, and then to the uttermost parts of the world. Isaiah 10, 27 says that the, the burden shall be removed off of your neck, shall be broken because of the, uh, the anointing. So, and then tongues is for inspiration, for true worship. John 4, verse 24, Jesus said, God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's why Paul spoke about praying in tongues and singing in tongues. Now, I want to just, uh, 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 the one I'm coming to now, just now, uh, is for power in prayer and for for uh, production in prayer, for, for prayer to be answered. Now, I'm going to show you from Romans 8, verses 26 to 28, what praying in tongues does for you. Everybody knows Romans 8 verse 28, you know, uh, which says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. But I want to show you that that scripture only comes into operation by praying in tongues. If you couple Romans 8 verses 26, 27 and 28, watch this now. I'm going to read it and I'll break it up for you. Likewise, the Spirit himself also helps our infirmities. Then the very next sentence tells you what your infirmity is. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought or how. <laughs> so we have a weakness. We don't have power and accuracy in prayer. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us. Look at this. So we don't know what to pray for. No, it doesn't say no, doesn't know how to pray. You don't know what to pray for. So the Spirit is an intercessor. He is the chief intercessor according to this Bible verse. Let's go according to Scripture again, uh, people. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us. Then verse 27 starts with the word and. I've checked this out in the, in the original. Uh, it's connected. The, 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 the translators put Bible verses in. But this was mentioned, verse 26 starts with the word likewise, verse 27 starts with the word and, in the same context, the same subject. And he searching the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit. Hebrews 7.25 talks about the Holy Spirit is our intercessor as well. Because he makes intercession for the saints. Watch this now, this is the key word to me of the, of the whole purpose of speaking in tongues, one of them. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Which means when you and I pray in tongues, the way God showed it to me is that tongues, the language of tongues comes from the Father or from Jesus, from the throne. In other words, God, uh, if, if a father... Once his son, this is a, let me give it in another illustration. If a father wants to bless his son with a bicycle, he gives his son the money. The son takes the money and, and gives it to the owner and the owner gives him the bicycle. 
So with tongues, God gives us the words. He sends it to the Holy Spirit. We pray it back to God, which means, watch this, according to the scripture, the Holy Spirit makes intercession for the saints. You're a saint according to the will of God, which means God knows what needs to be prayed. We don't know how to pray it in our own language. God sends it to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us the words because there's the law in asking. Remember, God created the heavens and the earth and, and the universe with words. The Bible says that we created in the image and likeness of God. Uh, Genesis 2 verse 7 says God made man a speaking spirit. So when we speak God's word back to him, he is obligated in this life because it's his money, it's his check. He has to answer that prayer in this life. That's why it's so important to build yourself up. The Bible says on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. We come to that scripture just now. In fact, I've just quoted it. Jude 1 verses 20 and 21. But ye beloved, uh, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Spirit, keeping yourselves in the love of God. They connected, by the way. Because Romans 5 verse 5 says that the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Then verse 28 starts, and we know because you are praying to God the perfect prayer language that he gave you then verse 28 comes into operation and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God if any man love me Jesus said he'll keep my commandments and Romans 5 verse 5 the love of God's been poured in our hearts by the Holy Spirit to those who are called according to his purpose that is to me then one of the number one reasons to pray in tongues is that when you pray in tongues, you pray a perfect prayer to God that has to be answered in this life. If you don't get that, then I don't know. But I'll drink to that. Cup of tea. Then the Holy, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the good that it does, brings understanding of the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Powerful. Then it gives us guidance. Tongues gives us guidance and direction from God as we are able to hear his voice more clearer. Acts 13 verse 2. Watch this. As they ministered to the Lord, I believe with tongues and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. I've noticed that when you pray in tongues, remember, you're praying the perfect will of God, you, you're edifying yourself and you're speaking to God. Then God gives you a word for people. Uh, and and uh, I've noticed, uh, well, let me just see if it, it comes up in the notes here. One second. Um, yeah, let me say this. I've, uh, Paul says, you, I will pray with understanding and I will pray in the spirit. I've noticed generally my prayer time in the morning besides other prayers I've averaged about an hour you know daily solid but I've noticed over the decades I pray in tongues about 45 minutes and in between that I've noticed the interpretation comes and sometimes it comes in the form of a prophecy a declaration or of a, or of a very bold prayer that I think I could never dream that up. It comes very bold because, you know, God's bold. God's not afraid of himself. If God looks into the mirror, he doesn't shy away. You understand? <laughs> and uh, so, so that's why the Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find help in the time of need. Powerful stuff, this man. And uh, so then the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to use spiritual gifts to the glory of God for the strengthening of the ministry. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1, follow after love and desire spiritual gifts. You know, Jesus said, and it's recorded in Luke 24 verse 49, that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you'll be clothed with power. Have you seen that, that guy, I forget his name, the actor, uh, I think it's Iron Man, and he stands and he puts his arms out. And then, you know, the, the fist comes and then all the metal stuff and the helmet comes and then he flies supersonically, he has more power uh, than he has in the flesh without this armor. 
So that's what the Holy Spirit does. He clothes us with power. You suddenly get into the supernatural vehicle of God's divine presence that is able to break through poverty, sickness, death, confusion, fear, uh, lack, anything that stands in your way. It has to move out because it, you're filled now with the glory of God and activating His presence, His glory and His anointing. How do you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Your heart must be prepared through repentance. Acts 2 verse 38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Then next, one must have a hunger for the fullness of the Spirit. It's in Matthew 5 verse 6. Jesus said, Blessed are those, they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, right standing with God, they shall be filled. And uh, there's a scripture interesting in Psalms where God says, Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. <laughs> so then you need to ask to receive. In Luke 11 verse 13, you know, Jesus is saying, if you being evil, me as a father, not perfect, know how to give good things to your children, how much more won't, won't the father give the Holy Spirit to them who ask him? Uh, so we need to ask to receive and believe. Then, sec then thirdly or fourthly, expect to receive. That's Luke 11 verse 13 again. Luke 6 verse 38. Remember Jesus is talking about giving. And uh, in that scripture, God expects us to expect. Strange phrase that. Expect. He expects us to expect because Jesus said, given it shall be given. Then you act in faith. Realize you do the talking and the Holy Spirit gives you the words. Expect to receive your prayer language. Know that God desires to give you the words. Well, here's the scripture, Luke eleven thirteen. If you being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit, which is a good gift, to them that ask him? Remember James 1, 17 says that the Father in heaven, from him comes every good and perfect gift. So for you to despise the gift of tongues is insulting the gift of the Father. Come on. And here's the command, here's the scripture that, that commands it. Ephesians 5 verses 18 to 20. And I'll explain this to you. A very interesting event happened in Acts chapter 2. Yeah, Paul says, don't be drunk with wine. So God uses speaking in tongues as the opposite uh, the supernatural for the natural of drinking alcohol. And uh, you'll see why now. Because So don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, let the Holy Spirit fill and control you. Uh, you know, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Then you will sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, making music to the Lord in your hearts. And you will always give thanks for everything to God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why did Paul... Uh, liken speaking in tongues to alcohol because they both intoxicate. Well, Acts 2 verse 15, a very interesting uh, thing. You can go and read it. <laughs> it says that when they were, were talking in tongues, the people accused them. This is the, when the Holy Spirit initially came out. The people said, these people are drunk. And you know what Peter replied in Acts 2 verse 15? He said, these men are not drunk as you suppose. In other words, they are intoxicated but they intoxicated with the supernatural power and presence of God. 1 Samuel 10 verse 6, the prophet said to Saul, when the Spirit of God comes upon you, you'll be turned into a different or a new man. That's what happens when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Now, to clarify scripture as well, again, there's a twofold experience in the Holy Spirit. The first one, Jesus spoke of in John 4 verse 14, he says the Holy Spirit when you first get saved, it's like a well of life. Look at the words Jesus said. But the water I give him takes away the thirst altogether. Speaking about salvation, look at this. It becomes a perpetual spring within them, giving them eternal life or like a well. A well can only feed a family or a village. That's speaking of salvation. It's perpetual. It never ends. Now watch the another Four chapters later, or three chapters later, Jesus is speaking in John chapter 7, verses uh, 37 to 39. Jesus speaks of rivers of living water. So yeah, Jesus, this is just before he was crucified. He, Jesus he stood and he shouted to the crowds. 
If you are thirsty, come to me. If you believe in me, come and drink. For as the scripture declares that rivers of living water will flow from within. And verse 39 says this, he spoke of the Holy Spirit, which had not yet been poured out. So it shows you even Jesus. So rivers, the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I noticed I got filled with the Holy Spirit at the age of 12 when I first spoke in tongues. When I got saved, but I was so young in the church that I got saved in and baptized in water, they didn't know what to do with me. So I backslid for about two years, a year and a half. Then when I came back to the Lord, it's like he filled me afresh with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. Do you know it changed my life? So much so that people heard about it in Johannesburg, the holiday makers, and they said, what has happened to Richard Gray? You know, because I became very bold from being very timid having gross fear of man, full of rejection, full of inadequacies. I mean, I failed at school. I had to repeat my last three years of school. Think about how messed up you have to be to repeat three grades. I don't know what it is now, 12, 11, and 10. And then I still didn't finish grade 12 because it was just too much for me. I was messed up, man. Anyway, so... And then I changed and I became very bold. And for some of you who might know me from 40 years ago, I was very bold. I was a lifesaver. I was a surfer. I was at school. Man, did I preach the gospel. I was like a gospel terrorist, if I can say that. You know, people feared me because I came with such boldness. And the scripture says that, that you're, you'll be turned into a new man. I was. I received such a baptism of boldness. And a baptism of authority. You know, I was even casting out devils and stuff like that. And praying for the sick. And uh, preaching the gospel uh, without any fear of man. People, in fact, I, I used to laugh because these lifesavers with their big bronze bodies. When they saw Richard Gray come in, they ran for their lives, man. I saw them and they used to giggle because they were scared of me. Because I used to be unafraid to preach the gospel. And I tell you, the Bible says when you preach the gospel... The Holy Spirit convicts, doesn't matter who, how strong or powerful you are, He convicts them of sin in their lives, righteousness to be and judgment to come. Now, you can't separate your love walk from the Holy Spirit. Before I pray for you, you uh, Romans 5, verse 5, I've quoted it, and Jude chapter 1. The love of God, because speaking in tongues, builds up your love. I do believe that. And the Bible says that faith works by love. 1 Timothy 1 verse 6 and 7, stir up the gift that is within you. If I'm not mistaken, that's what it says. And uh, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Look at that. There they go, hand in hand. Many scriptures. And then interestingly enough, before I pray for you, 1 John 4 verse 18 says that the love of God costs that all fear. Hey, come on. So, you know, faith is not the opposite of fear. Love is the opposite of fear, according to that scripture. So perfect love casts out all fear. Now, I'm going to pray for you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And this is the way I do it. I've been doing it for decades because I really used to struggle in this area at one stage. And God gave me a simple method that I'm actually going to do here now. There's no one else around. So it's quite tough for me to do it. Um, but I'm going to pray. I'm going to first of all pray a prayer. And I want you to agree with me. Uh, just because of, of technology. I want you to agree with the prayer that I pray. Then, then what I'm going to do straight after that, I'm going to pray in tongues. And when I pray in tongues, I want you to, to start trying to copy my tongues. The reason I say that is to get your vocal cords moving. It's to get you stepping out in faith because you've got to do the talking. Just like you hear me talk, that's how you talk. You won't get more than three words exactly the same as mine. I'm talking about, about decades of experience. You might get three words the same, but then something will happen. You need, this is where you've got to be sensitive. You'll hear you talking suddenly another language. Because everyone that speaks in tongues has a different language. It's quite phenomenal. Because the Bible says you speak in tongues of men and of angels. So then when you hear that, then... Close your ears, as it were, to, in a sense, to me, and you just keep flowing and you keep speaking hard and loud. You must hear your own voice. You can't whisper. You've got to hear, hey, listen, all of us shout, all of us scream, all of us talk loud. 
So this is not a time to be shy and whatever, uh, self-conscious. Uh, if, you, if you're too self-conscious, get this recording, go into a, a, a quiet room, play it again, and then, then go over this again. If you're too shy, people listening to you right now. Anyway, so uh, then, then you'll, you, you must pray. And you know what you will experience? This is for the first timers. Your spirit man is located in this area of your body, not up here. So you can't reason this thing out. You have to believe to receive. You'll feel such an amazing peace come over you, an assurance, a joy, like love. It's, some people get such an overwhelming feeling, they even start crying. Some of you might even get delivered of demons. Some of you might get healed on the spot because the Holy Spirit is a powerful spirit. He's the agent of creation. When God spoke, if you read Genesis 1 verse 1 and 2, the Holy Spirit was there. He was brooding over the chaos and darkness. And as God spoke, the Holy Spirit was the power to rearrange the furniture, as it were, and bring it into being. That's how powerful the Holy Spirit is here. So you have the Holy Spirit in you as a believer. If you're not saved, you need to ask God to come into your life, forgive you your sins, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Then this gift is for you. And so, um, so, so you'll, you'll, you'll get that experience and, and uh, you know, if, if I shock, if I bring 50 people and I shock them all with the same amount of electricity, everyone has a different reaction. Some people go, ah, if you like me, you scream, you know, I'm quite a you know, <laughs> extrovert when it comes to reactions, you know, trying to calm down. But anyway, so I'm going to pray now and then you will have your own experience with the Lord. So let's go ahead. I want you just to raise your hands and close your eyes if possible. Put out all distractions. Switch the TV off now or the radio or other music. Maybe you can have nice worship music on, but don't let any other voice uh, be stronger than my voice at the moment and your voice. So it's very important to be focused now as well. So I'm going to pray for you. Then I'm going to pray in tongues. Then I'm going to coach you as we go along. Just another five minutes and then this is over. Father, I bring everyone to you who's hungry and thirsting after righteousness and who's desperate to be filled with the Holy Spirit and receive this power to be clothed with this dynamic power that will literally change them forever, Father. So right now I rebuke every spirit of unbelief, every spirit of fear, every lying spirit of tradition, a religious spirit, religious words, lies that have, that have spoken to your children against tongues and the Holy Spirit, I break it in the name of Jesus. And Father, I, I, I cancel uh, any spirit of inadequacy and inferiority and self-pity. Lord, we, we banish those devils now. We banish those mindsets now in the name and by the blood of Jesus. And I plead the blood of Jesus over us right now. I cast out every devil. I silence every devil's voice. I silence the voice of self. And we release the voice and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And Lord, we ask you now, uh, just agree with me. You can pray along with me. Just say, dear Father in heaven, thank you for sending Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming and dying for my sins. I received you as my Lord and Savior. Now today I receive you as my baptizer in the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I ask you to... Uh, Fill me with, with, with the Holy Spirit and I decree and I confess by faith, I will speak in a supernatural language. I will speak in tongues today. I receive the gift of the Holy Spirit in my life today, in Jesus' name and by His blood. Right, let's go. Come on, you got to talk. You got to start. You got to hear yourself. Keep your eyes closed if necessary, your hands raised. Concentrate now. Kistela boro sebe. Mantila gatolo borota. Remember, look for your own language. Even though you're voicing now, look for your own language. If I'm talking and you're talking in tongues, don't, don't stop when I'm talking now. Some people catch it immediately. Some people take it just a bit longer. Come on, let's keep going. Kistela borona. That's it. That's powerful. Come on, I already sense some of you are speaking in tongues. Now run with your own language. Speak so you can hear it. Just say as loud as I'm talking. 
Tokina, Tendala Borose Penanata, Catala Borose Ketela Borote Babenda, Mantila Boroco Sela Borassa Baboto. That's it. That's powerful, man. That's powerful. You see, it's, you see how easy it is. That's what Jesus said. It's like drinking water. You, you take a sip and then the consequences take care of themselves. Like me now. Taking a sip of my tea, that's how easy it is. Drink, Jesus said. How do you drink? You just speak by faith. Come on, let's just keep going for a few more moments. Men talaboro kasela bara pa bonto. Gis talaboro celeberia pa talaboro tanda bokota. If you need to man and you're only by yourself, lay your hands on your head because by the laying of hands, so by faith, lay your hands on your head. If there's someone very spiritual that's with you, then, then you lay your hands on uh, uh, that person, the recipient's head. And, and because spiritual gifts are imparted as well, just like the people at Ephesus prophesied. So come on, let's go. Let's keep going. That's powerful. Thank you, Lord. Oh my goodness, I can already see God touching you. I can see some of you crying already. I can see some of you just being baptized not with the Holy Spirit. He's, he's baptizing you in His love. He's baptizing you with comfort and assurance now. And He's baptizing you with peace right now. Yes, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Meste la borroco te la borria papanto. Manti la gasolo borrosse bebente. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to just say something. Once you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that gift never goes away from you. That's why Paul said in Ephesians 5.18, be continually filled. Pray in the Spirit every day, on every occasion. When you're in the bath, in the shower, on the loo, man, while you're driving, pray in tongues. Because remember what we said tongues does, especially according to Romans 8 verse 26 and 27. You keep praying in tongues so that God can answer your prayers. Remember, he that speaks in an unknown tongue builds up himself. So give God construction material to work with for your life, which is the construction material for the supernatural for creation. Remember is words. And Jesus said, you'll have what you say. So when you pray in tongues, you're praying a perfect prayer that God has to answer in this life. And you're praying for yourself. You're praying for your family. You're actually interceding for business and maybe an unsaved loved one. So the more you can pray in tongues, the more words you're giving God to build this edifice, this, this construction in your life, to, to bring destiny to pass in your life. Bless you. Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's other stuff that is going on. If this has been a blessing and an eye-opener for you. Then, then come on, share it with someone. Tell them to log on because this is a very important gift. It's a vital gift. It's a gift that's necessary according to the scriptures that I've read. And, uh, and, and if you can get a hold of uh, Bill Hammond's book, I think it's 77 Reasons why you to speak in tongues very powerful book a lot more information than what i just gave you god bless love you and uh, congratulations thank you father i thank you lord for for the baptism in the holy spirit in my friend's life today oh lord they're changing into a new person they're going to be such powerful witnesses for you looking forward to the gifts now lord and just in in closing jesus said rivers of living water like myself rivers here's one of my rivers here a book that i've written my other river is healing prophecy my other river is 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 uh gosh what else is, is there music man i've written music you know uh, 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 uh is teaching pastoring, being a prophetic, even apostolic now. These are rivers that flow out of me. Faith flows out of me too, you know. And uh, the, even a river of being able to be a husband and a father uh, and, uh, you know, stuff like that, which is amazing, you know. So, so, so power will flow out of you to increase your life. You know, just, just something very interesting about a river. All major cities in the world are built around a river. If it's a village, it might be a stream or a well. But major cities are built around a river. So the greater flow that you have in there, the more people 
listen to me. And I know some of you, as, you, as you're going through this now, sense the call of God on your life. And the more you flow in, uh, in this prayer language, because that's what it is mainly for, is a prayer language to get things done, the more people you will influence and affect as you're diligent and punctual and do this on a day-to-day -day basis, moment by moment, as much as you can. God bless you. It's Richard Gray saying uh, thank you for tuning in. Amen. Bye. Thank you for watching. We know you received something encouraging to empower your relationship with Christ. Please take advantage of our other materials by Richard and Deborah. Should you desire to bless and support this ministry, please use the following details to impart your blessing. May the Lord return the favor to you a thousandfold according to Deuteronomy 1 verse 11. Should you be in the vicinity of Peter Marisburg in KZN, you are welcome to attend our church service at International Christian Center, Peter Maritzburg, located at 28 Pilot Road, Epworth. Our times are as follows. During our summer months, we meet from October until the end of April at 8 a.m. in the morning. During our winter months, from May till the end of September, we meet at 9 a.m. in the morning. If you have never surrendered your life to Christ or need to recommit to the Lord Jesus, please pray this prayer to God now. Dear God, our Father in heaven, thank you for sending Jesus to be my Savior. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for my sins. As I ask you to forgive and cleanse me of all of my sins by the power of your shed blood, I receive you as my Savior, Lord and friend. As you make me your child today, Thank you again, Father, for the indescribable gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let the Lord lead you to a Bible-based church. Alternatively, contact us to be of assistance in this important next step of your relationship with Christ. God bless Richard and Deborah Gray. And God bless you and do have a God-filled life with Jesus Christ.